Harry Potter, the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Chapter Sixteen, The Chamber of Secrets. All those times we were in the bathroom, and she was just three toilets away," said Ron bitterly at breakfast next day. "And we could have asked her, and now." It had been hard enough trying to look for spiders, escaping their teachers long enough to sneak into a girl's bathroom. The girl's bathroom, moreover, right next to the scene of the first attack. We first attack was going to be almost impossible. But something happened in the first lesson, Transfiguration, that drove the Chamber of Secrets out of their mind for the first time in weeks. Ten minutes into the class, Professor McGonagall told them that their exams would start on the first of June, one week from today. Exams, howled Miss Finnegan, forced. We're still getting exams. There was a loud bang behind Harry and Neville on bottom, one slip, vanishing on, one, vanishing one of the legs on his desk. Professor McGonagall restored it with a wave of her own wand, and turned frowning to Seamus. The whole point of keeping the school open is time for you to read. Save your education," she said sternly. "The exams will therefore take place as usual." It occurred to Harry that there would be exams with the castle in the state. Here was a great deal of Monty's nurse murdering around the room, which made Professor McGonagall scowl even more darkly. Professor Dumbledore's instructions were to keep the school running as usual, she said, and that I hardly point out means finding out how much you have learned this year. Harry looked down at the pair of white rabbits we had supposed to be turning into slippers. What had he learned so far this year? He couldn't seem to think of anything that would be useful in an exam. Ron looked as though he'd just been told he had to go and live in the Forbidden Forest. Can you imagine me? Taking exams with us, he asked Terry, <coughs> holding up his wand, which had just started whistling around, whistling loudly. Three days before first exam, Professor McGonagall made another announcement at breakfast. I have a good news," she said. "The great hope," she said, and the great hope instead of falling silence erupted. Dumbledore's coming back! Several people yelled joyfully. "You've caught the hair of Slytherin!" squealed the girl of the Ravenclaw table. Quidditch matches are back on! roared Wood excitedly. When the hubbub had subsided. Professor McGonagall said, "Professor Sprout had informed me that the mandrakes are ready for cutting at last. Tonight we'll be able to revive those people who have been petrified." I need hurriedly remind you all that one of them may well be able to tell us who or what attacked them. I am hopeful that this dreadful year. Will end with our catching with Kerbet. There was an explosion of cheering.
explosion of cheering. Harry looked over the Slytherin table and wasn't at all surprised to see that Draco Malfoy hadn't enjoyed it. Ron, however, was looking happier than he looked in days. It won't matter what we never asked Myrtle that, he said to Harry. Hermione will probably have all the answers when they walk her up. Mind you, she'll go crazy when she finds we've got exam in three days. Time. She hasn't studied. It might be kinder to leave her where she is till they're over. Just that, Ginny Weasley came over and sat down next to Ron. She looked tense and nervous. Harry noticed that her hand was tore sting in her lap. What's up? said Ron, helping himself to more porridge. Ginny didn't say anything, but glanced up and down the Gryffindor table with a scared look on her face that reminded Harry of someone. Thought he couldn't think who. Speed it out, said Ron, watching her. Harry suddenly realized who Ginny looked like. She was rocking back and forward in her chair, exactly like Dobby did when he was teetering on the edge of revealing forbidden any information. I've got to tell you something, Ginny mumbled, carefully not looking at Harry. What is it? said Harry. Ginny looked though she couldn't find the right words. What? said Ron. Ginny opened her mouth, but no sound came. Harry leaned forward and spoke quietly so that Ginny and Ron could hear him. I see something about the Chamber of Secrets. Have you seen something? Someone acting oddly? Ginny drew a deep breath and the precise moment, Percy Weasley appeared looking tired and worn. If you finish eating, I'll take the seat, Ginny. I'm starving. Um, I've only just come off patrol duty. Ginny jumped up as though her chair had been even electrified. Gave Percy a fleeting, frightening look and scampered away. Percy sat down and grabbed a muff from the center of the table. Percy! said Ron angrily. She was just about to tell us something important. Halfway through a cup of tea, Percy chuckled. What sort of thing? he said, coughing. I just asked her if she'd seen anything odd, and she started to say, Oh, that, that's nothing to do with the Chamber of Secrets, said Percy at once. How do you know? said Ron, his eyebrows raised. Well, er, uh, if you must know, Ginny, er, uh, walking, walked in on me the other day when I was, well, never mind. The point is, she spotted doing something and I am, I asked her not to mention it to anybody. I must say, I did think she'd keep her want in nothing, really. I just read her. Harry and never seen Percy look so uncomfortable. What were you doing, Percy? said Ron, grinning. Go on, tell us, we won't laugh. Percy didn't smile back. Pass me the drawers, Harry. I'm starving. Harry knew the whole mystery might be solved tomorrow without their help, but he wasn't about to pass up a chance to speak to Merle. Were back, being led to history of magic by Gilmore Lockhart. Lockhart, who had so often assured them that all danger had passed, only to prove the wrong right way away, was now wholeheartedly convinced that. It was certainly worth the trouble to see them safely down the corridors. His hair wasn't as sleek as usual. 
it seemed he had been up most of the night patrolling the fourth floor. Mark my words, he said, assuring them around the corner. The first word out of the news poor petrified people's mouth will be it was Harry. Frankly, I astounded Professor McNuggle thinks all these security measures are necessary. I agree, sir, said Harry, making Ron drop his book in surprise. Thank you, Harry, said Ron gracious locker graciously while they waited for a long line of purple poop to pass. I mean, we teachers have quite enough to be getting on with. Without walking student to class and standing guard all night. That's right, said Ron, catching on. Why don't you leave us here, sir? We've only got one more quarter to go. You know, Weasley. I think I will, said Lockhart. I really should go and prepare my next class. And he hurried off. Prepare his class, Ron sneered after him. Gone to cruel here more like. Curly's hair more like. They let the rest of the Gryffindor draw ahead of them, then darted down the side passage and hurried off toward Morning Mole's bathroom. But just as they were congratulating each other on the brilliant scheme, Potter, Weasley, what are you doing? It was Professor McNuggle, and her mouth was the thinnest. Of this line, we were we were we were going to go to go and see Hermione," said Ron. Ron and Professor McGonagall both looked at him. "We haven't seen her for ages, Professor," Harry went on hurriedly, treading on Ron's foot. "And we thought we'd sneak into the hospital wing, you know, and tell her the Mandrakes are nearly ready, and not to worry." Professor McGonagall was still. Staring at him, and for a moment Harry thought she was going to explode, but when she spoke, it was a a strangely croaky voice. Of course, he said. Harry amazed saw a tear glistening in her pretty eyes. Of course, I realize this has all been heard is on the front of those who have been. I quite understand. Yes. Potter, of course you might visit Miss Granger. I'll inform Professor Pins where you've gone. Tell Madame Pomfrey I have given my permission. Harry and Ron walked away, hardly daring to believe that they avoid detention. As they turned the corridor, they distinctly heard Professor McNuggle blow her nose. That. Said Ron firmly, "What's the best story you've ever came up with?" They had no choice now, but to go to the hospital wing and tell Madame Pomfrey that they had Professor McGonagall's permission to visit Hermione. Madame Pomfrey let them in, but when we look sadly, there is no, just no point talking to a petrified person," she said. And they had to admit she had a point when they taken their seats next to Hermione. It was plain that Hermione didn't have the faintest linking that she had visitors, and that they might just as well tell her beside Cabinet not to worry for all the good it would do. Wonder if she did see it, the attacker, although said Ron. Looking sadly at Hermione's wicked face, because if he sneaked up on the, oh, no one will ever know. But Harry, but Harry wasn't looking at Hermione's face. He was more interested in her right hand. It lay crunched on top of her blanket, and bending closer, she saw the piece of the paper was. Punching inside her fist, 
making sure that Madame Pomfrey was nowhere here near, he pointed this out of out to Rome. Try and get it out, Rome whispered, shifting his chair so that he blocked Henry from Madame Pomfrey's view.